All right, so this is your stress is killing you. Three ways to outsmart it. Uh, what I do is a public service as part of a monthly talk that we do. <clears throat> and they're gonna be every month we have a different body signal. In other words, we're gonna interpret what our body is trying to tell us. Today, we're talking about stress. So here are five things you wanna learn. The three types of stress and how they influence your life. Foods and how to consume those that'll help you better cope with stress. How to improve your physical performance, boost your calming chemicals and increase your inner peace. Number four, four specific action steps to begin outsmarting your stress right now. And then a key to stress relief that medical doctors are not talking about. Okay, so why am I here? Uh, I'm here as a chiropractor because I wanna help people who maybe don't understand the magnitude of how stress is actually affecting their life. Everyone kind of gets that stress is a killer. They've heard that it's kind of a cliche now to say, but I really want to hold this so that you really get an understanding about what your body is doing, what it's trying to tell you, and the, the severe impact that it actually has on your life. And so most people don't understand how severely stress actually influences health and human performance, how it leads to health problems, symptoms, eventually diseases. And so to shine a light on some natural things that you can do, um, because unfortunately with today's uh, medical care, uh, most people, if they report a symptom to their doctor, they're going to be prescribed some kind of drug without ever truly knowing what's actually going on. So we want to give you answers. We want to give you strategies and options uh, that are non-pharmaceutical, uh, non-surgical, so that you can have a great life and then share that with those close to you. All right, so we're going to start with this. Hopefully you've seen this before. And this one, this one's a classic stress reduction kit. I love it. Um, but all joking aside, in all honesty, there are three types of stress, chemical, mental, and ooh, ouch, physical. We're going to talk about these. We'll start with chemical. So the Environmental Working Group did a, a study where they actually looked at umbilical cord blood. So this is a baby, day one in life, brought into the world. Then they took a sample of that blood. They found 287 chemicals detected in the blood, 180 of them cause cancer in humans and animals. 217 are toxic to the brain and nervous system. And that's the big one that we're gonna talk about today. And then 208 of those chemicals cause birth defects or abnormal development in animal tests. So we're bombarded, whether we're a little baby or whether we've been in this life for a while, <clears throat> we are constantly bombarded with chemical stress and it's real, it impacts our body. You probably know someone who can't eat a certain uh, type of food, or they say, oh, if I am exposed to that, then such and such will happen with my body. So we relate that chemicals can cause physical issues. Uh, this is not new. All right, so mental stress. So my question to you is, where do you hold your stress? Many people feel it maybe at their skull, maybe in their neck, their shoulders. Some people experience it in mid-back, and some people even feel, mostly guys, feel low back uh, tension and stress uh, in response to mental or emotional stress. And so it's very, very real that our mental or emotional state, what's going on inside our, our mind can actually spill over and control or we can actually feel it inside of our body. Um, so Robert Leahy down here at the bottom, um, he is a professor of psychology at Well Cornell Medical School. He's written several books. Uh, this is one stat and then the next slide is another stat by him but 49% of the general population has a history of anxiety, depression, or substance abuse, or some of, of all three major problems. So stress is a huge, huge issue in the United States. In fact, 90% of all medical doctor visits are due to some sort of stressor. So check this out. Stress is not, as I said, for the adults only. The average high school kid today has the same level of anxiety as the average psychiatric patient did in the early 1950s. That is crazy. It's, it's absolutely nuts what we're expected to do today as human beings walking through this American kind of culture. Um, and it's our kids, they're feeling the effects of stress as well. And the third type of stress is this physical stress. Uh, we are no strangers to the fact that sitting is the new smoking. Um, yes, you can light up that cigarette and you can cause harm to your body. And unfortunately, what most Americans do most of the time, this sitting posture also we know is causing damage to the, to the human body. Uh, we look at our tech, we give our kids cell phones or devices 
uh, tablets, iPads, uh, looking down, causing stress and tension in the neck and shoulders. This is the new thing, okay? So sitting is the new smoking. That came from medicine in 2015. Chiropractors, of course, have known that for many, many decades before that. Um, and now we have the use of cell phones and tech for the, our younger group. They are going to grow up with these devices okay for most of us adults we've had them for not so long but for these kids that are having them at the age of two uh, they can get that finger going they know how to swipe left right up down um, and they're going to grow up with that unless they have strategies or, or techniques to deal with that that physical stress is going to be overwhelming for them and then of course birth there are many studies that show that the birth process for a brand new baby was traumatic and that there are physical effects of that on the baby that most medical personnel would not even notice unless they really uh, check specifically for that. Um, there are some studies more recently that have shown that 80% of babies born <clears throat> had some sort of nerve dysfunction due to the physical stress of that birth experience. And so this is not something to be taken lightly. Chemical stress, physical stress, mental stress <clears throat> are very real. All right, and we, what about the good things? You know, we, we hope to have really good things happen in life. And so for every good thing, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So we have maybe a new house that we just purchased, maybe a new baby, we just got married, or maybe we got a new job. These are all wonderful things. And we call those use stress. These are good stressors, things that, that can help us, but they come along with cost. And so for that new house, we have a mortgage payment, we have new furniture we gotta place in the house, repairs, lawn maintenance, taxes. For that baby, oh, say goodbye to sleep. <laughs> you got diapers, you got hospital costs, screaming. Uh, there's some irritation inside internally if you're not getting enough sleep. A wedding, fantastic experience. We, ex we had three of those in the last three weeks. But I'll tell you what, those people going through that experience, there is stress there, invitations, costs, uh, the clothing, the availability of locations, getting people to the event. Uh, there's a lot of stress involved. And then, of course, a new job. Congratulations. Here's your ball of stress. Your schedule changes. There's a learning curve. Your taxes. Uh, you have to have new routines going to a location and new coworkers meet new people. All of them can have a negative impact. And so here's really why I'm here as a chiropractor talking about this is, is that stress itself. We can look on the Internet. We can find all kinds of blogs and all kinds of information about what to do with stress. Here's really what it boils down to is that you have a system in your body that is built to deal with stress. The filter for stress in your body is your nerve system. <clears throat> At three weeks old, up to until six weeks old, your nervous system is forming before any of the other organs. So if we look at the six week old right here, that is the nervous system. That is the spinal cord, the beginnings of the spinal cord, which is called the notochord. That's the beginning of the spinal cord because we know that your nerve system needs to coordinate and control all functions. You don't see organs, you don't see blood, you don't see tissues in there other than the nerve system and then some skin forming. And so your body knows how to control itself. It's through the, the nervous system. So we wanna end the confusion. I wanna show you simple ways of healing from stress and we're gonna do it through the nervous system. All right, so here's the question. When you get injured and you put ointment on, you put a Band-Aid on it, does the Band-Aid heal? Does the ointment heal? Okay, you break a bone, you put a cast on it, does the cast heal your body? You know, as chiropractors, we have a unique philosophy of saying that, no, it's not the cast that heals, it's not the ointment that heals, it's your body. Your body has the innate ability to heal itself, which is fantastic, it's wonderful, and we trust in that as chiropractors, and we want to show you techniques and strategies to how to use that so your body can heal better, especially um, from stress. So here's some of the symptoms that many people experience. So this stress idea, the chemical, physical, and the mental, emotional stresses, they're real, they impact the body, and they cause all kinds of things, everything from heart to lungs to brain to digestive system to immune system. These are things that people experience on a daily basis that have their roots in stress. And so today, with the information we're gonna go over, you can reduce that, you can dramatically improve your, your experience and hopefully reduce some of these symptoms, not because the symptoms themselves are bad, but because the stress underneath is what's causing it. We wanna reduce the stress. Okay, so Bruce Lipton, I had the privilege of learning from at my uh, um, chiropractic college, and he was fantastic to listen to. I listened to him for hours. He was a cell biologist, or he still is a cell biologist, now turned author. In fact, if, if I inspire you at all today, um, what I want 
is, is pick up his book. It's called The Biology of Belief. A fantastic read. It really was my foundation at the very beginning of when I, try, I, I started to understand a lot of these concepts and principles. Okay, so what he said, he said, the function of the nervous system is to perceive the environment and coordinate the behavior of all other cells. In other words, your nervous system is your filter. Over here on the right side, we have all those good experiences that come along with all those stresses. Your nerve system picks up on all the experiences that you're going through, it filters it, and then it directs how your body's supposed to deal with that stress. Whether you're supposed to rest and relax and enjoy because it's a good experience, or whether your body's supposed to go into this fight or flight mode, this sympathetic mode, this alert mode, emergency mode is what I call it. Your nervous system actually directs your body for how to respond to any particular stressor or potential stressor. Okay, so the nervous system is the control center for stress. So as you're watching this video, I want you to pay attention to what's going on inside your body. So going on a nice little bike ride, nice woods, should be a nice, peaceful, relaxing event. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, that's a bear. And it's chasing you. Let's see, is it still there? Hopefully we've gotten away from it. Oh my goodness, it's still there. That bear is not slowing down either. This guy better move. We're gonna get eaten. <laughs> that bear wants us. Okay, what's that up ahead? Oh, it's a roadblock. Get off the bike, run. Run, 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 run. That bear is right behind you. You better go. Maybe this tree will protect us. And there it is. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I thought the guy was going to die. Okay. Every time I show that to my kids, they love it. They say, Oh, I want to watch it again. Okay. So my question to you is what in the world was your heart rate doing? What were your eyes doing? What was your stress or anxiety level doing at that point? Okay. So even though you're sitting wherever you're sitting or standing or walking or hopefully not driving, listening to this, but um, you are not next to a bear, a bear. I'm going to say that's pretty safe to assume. However, your body responds as if there's a bear in the room. Okay. Because your nervous system is constantly putting in input into your brain and your brain is constantly trying to decipher what your environment is like, and then it's gonna direct your body how to respond, okay? So if you had an elevation in heart rate like I did, if you had an elevation in blood pressure like I probably did, if your eyes and your alertness and your anxiety levels went up, it's because your brain and your nerve system told your body, hey, we need to be ready to either punch this thing in the eyeball or run away. We're gonna die if we just sit here and do nothing, okay? That's called the sympathetic nervous system. That's the fight or flight, that's the emergency mode. Your body prepares its internal environment based on what it perceives in the outside environment. So there doesn't even need to be a bear in the room, and your, your brain and nerve system can still react as if there are, because your nerve system perceives threat, it perceives stress. And your body is going to follow along with what your nerve system tells it to do. Okay, so there's this constant balance or imbalance in your body. We have on the right side the fight dominant, that's survival. Okay, it's really important that your that your nerve system direct the, the blood flow to your extremities. Okay, increase your blood pressure, increase the stress hormones. Those are going to put sugar into the blood so you can have energy to move and run away. It's going to increase the perception of pain so you know if you've been bit or hit or killed, not killed, uh, <laughs> maimed or injured. It's going to increase the inflammation so your body can heal and recover after the threat is over. Those are really important for survival. However, if your goal is digestion, balance, hormones that are, that are even keel, if your goal is sleep, if your goal is fertility, and you're constantly in this fight or flight or, or emergency mode, then those are not important. That's not the way to go, okay? So this is the balance that we're talking about. It's a constant shift, left, right, left, right. Your nervous system is directing you which way your body is responding at any given situation. So we're gonna go over some keys to supporting your nervous system to reduce those Effects of stress. Here's a big one. Okay, so your emotional stress. This one is super important. And by the way, um, if you're 
you're taking notes or feel like you want to take notes on the things I'm going to tell you or have told you, um, I'm going to have Natalie post in the comments a link for a download uh, on the notes that I've prepared for you. So you can just download those notes. You'll have uh, the important high points on all this uh, and just take that home. So just click on the, the link for download, um, get that, and uh, you'll have those notes. So this emotional stress. One of the keys is gratitude. This is the big one, okay? Out of all the things that I teach in, in all of my systems, all of my programs, um, this is really the big one. The gratitude list. Being grateful is powerful. It may seem trite, it may seem simple, but it is powerful, it is deep. You can't focus on stress and gratitude at the same time, okay? And so what you wanna do is you wanna begin the day, focus on one, two, three things that you're grateful for. Um, when you close at night, the last thing you want to think about is not all the things you didn't get done, not all the things that went wrong. You want to focus on something that you're grateful for for the day. So you want to begin each day, you want to end each day with gratitude, and having gratitude during the day is great. So one, one thing you can do is maybe in the morning set yourself up for success by typing in a couple things you're grateful for, and then reflect on it every once in a while throughout the day, two times, three times, four times throughout the day. It changes everything, especially when you throw in breathing. Today we're not covering breathing. Um, but we'll do that in a uh, future future talk. So gratitude, huge, powerful. Never begin or end the day without it. Do that for 30 days. Commit to it. Every day, I'm not going to begin or end without it. It'll change your life. 30 days. All right, so chemical stress. These are nerve system nutrients. These are things that you want to add to your nerve system because the nerve system is the filter for stress. You want to support that system. So number one is good fats. Things like avocados, coconut oil, and even dark chocolate. Eating healthy doesn't have to taste bad, but you want it at least 70% cacao, and my goal would be higher, 80, 82% um, is better. It's gonna have less sugar. There's even some good brands that use stevia as a sweetener rather than any sugar at all. Um, the, the name brand that is in our house is called Lily's, L-I-L-L-Y-S. Um, so they have dark chocolate that doesn't have any sugar at all in it. Um, so some other fats that you want, things like walnuts, things like almonds, um, fish oil is a fantastic fat. As long as it's not rancid, make sure you have a reputable brand that has not been exposed to air um, because you want the good, high-quality fats in your body. Every cell in your body has fat in it. There's a, what's called a bilipid, um, a two, two layers of lipids, two layers of fat that cover every single cell of your body, especially your brain and nerve system. Okay, so you want to feed the good fat. And number two is vegetables, food that was once living, things that you could find in nature and go out there and eat, especially green leafy vegetables. If we added that, um, that's a huge stress reducer. Um, stress in the body caused by chemicals, if we're eating the wrong types of fat, if we're not eating enough vegetables, if we're eating too much processed food, it feeds inflammation, inflammation feeds free radicals, free radicals cause extra stress in the body. Okay, we wanna reduce that, and veggies are a good way to do that, good fats are a good way to do that, chemical stress. And physical stress part one, in okay, case so of your spinal health. Unfortunately, many of us today spend a lot of time in a chair or sitting. Okay, we've been sentenced to work in a chair for, for many of us, most I would say in the United States. And so you wanna do anything you can to move the body. Uh, your body, just like when we were being chased by that bear, your nerve system picked up that stress. It feeds information into your body and you wanna move it, okay, maybe even Things like a punching bag are fantastic to get the stress out. But if you can't do that, walking, running, swimming, jogging, swinging a hammer, any type of movement you can do is a good movement to break up the monotony of sitting in a chair for so many hours like most Americans do. Okay, number two is if you are gonna be in a chair, you wanna have proper posture. Okay, this is the found, this is the basics. So you wanna have proper lumbar support, you wanna have your head at eye level, okay, or slightly up. If we're looking down with technology with laptops especially it's causing additional stress and pressure in our in our neck and shoulders that feeds into the nerve system we want to have our eyes level or slightly up to reduce some of that damage in our neck and shoulders and number three this is a fantastic hack you want to increase your water consumption keep a water bottle with you fill it up three four five times a day the more water you drink the more often you'll have to get up to empty the bladder and that's great to signal movement into your spine and nerve system so here's an exercise i want us to do together but wherever you're at, like I said, unless you're driving, I want you to throw your head forward. So shift it way far forward, just like you see in the picture. Take a deep breath in and relax. Bring your ears up over your shoulders so you're sitting nice and tall now. Take another deep breath in 
and relax. You can do that again one or two more times if you need help. But which one was easier? Okay, of course, for me and for most people I talk to, it's easier if your head is in an upright position. That's the nervous system, that's the spine, that's the relationship of your posture, your nerves, your lungs, your ribs, it's all coordinated. And your body needs that oxygenation, not only for the brain, but for, for everything, for energy production, for your whole body. So if you're not getting enough uh, oxygen in, your body can't perform proper function. Sitting up taller, having a nerve system, a spine that's working correctly is a great stress reducer. And having poor posture is a, an additional stress to your body. Okay, the spine and the nerve system are intricately linked, which is what we're talking about um, next. So. A uh, mentor of mine, Dr. Dan Sullivan, he says the brain requires feedback from the spine through proper alignment and movement in order to deliver the right information to all muscles, organs, and tissues. Remember, your spine and nerve system, that's your filter for stress. That's the way that your body directs stress up and down. And so if you don't have proper movement in your spine, it's impacting your nerve system. If you don't have proper alignment in your spine, then it's adding additional stresses to your nerves through the muscles and that feeds up into the brain and causes extra stress into your body. And your body reacts appropriately. Okay, your body perceives this as a threat. It sends you over into an imbalanced state which is called sympathetic dominance, too much fight or flight, or emergency mode. If you have improper posture, if you're not moving properly or you're not aligned properly, it's adding additional stress into your body, into your life. All right, so let's look at an example of this. Uh, most people know Superman. Christopher Reeve and what happened to him, you know, <clears throat> very fit gentleman, um, just a, a fantastic career ahead of him. He had one accident. He fell off a horse, had an injury, and his neurosurgeon said the injury itself was the size of the tip of your pinky. Okay, so extremely small injury, but it was to a very specific place, and it was a very impactful area, very important area, the upper cervical spine. So his C2 was fractured. Very small injury, but it was very specific, very severe, and it shut his body down. His whole nerve system shut down. He could not control his arms, his legs, his internal organs started to shut down. He had to be placed on machines to keep him alive for the rest of his life. He aged 25 years in a little under a decade. And so this small seemingly injury to a very important place had dramatic effects on his physical body and his his future and ultimately it ended up killing him okay so why is the spine so important because it protects and directs your nervous system as i mentioned over here on this picture on the right side we'll show you the uh the injury size right at the end of your pinky very small injury but because the spine and the nerve system are intricately linked they have an intimate relationship you can't separate them if you have problems with your your spine you do have problems with your nerve system because they impact each other it's really important area. So let me ask you this question. Understanding that Superman was killed, and before he was killed, he had his body shut down by a major injury to the, the neck. Let me ask you this question. Is it possible that all the accumulation of stress, physical stress, poor posture, falls, and like I said, even birth process, is it possible that all those little things accumulate over time do nothing? And we know that that's not possible. We do have stress that's spilling over into our nervous system from our spine. All right, so what chiropractors call this, we call this a subluxation. That's the word we use for this. When there's an interference in your brain and nervous system from a spinal vertebra that's either not aligned or not moving properly. We refer to it as subluxation, and it is important. One of the important things is some people have had this for decades, 20, 30, 40 years, because it's small. They don't know that there's any particular symptom or any particular problem, but it's accumulating, it's building over time, okay? And so understanding that your nervous system is a filter for stress, it directs that flow, fight or flight or rest and relax, right? It takes all the experiences. If your spine is out of alignment, your nervous system is not fully capable of appropriately managing stress because you're interfering with the nervous system. So if you have subluxation present in your spine, your nervous system can't even properly direct you for most people, it directs your body into more of a fight or flight mode because it's detecting a constant stressor. In other words, the bear stays in the room if you have subluxation in your spine. So if a bear was in the room, do you think your body could fully focus on fertility, making a baby, or keeping a baby, or delivering a baby? 
If you were in that fight or flight mode, could you have proper digestion? Could your body heal that and focus on it? Would you have quality sleep? Or even things like headaches, would your body be able to heal you from things that are constantly going on if you have a problem with your spine and nerve system? Okay, so you can have all the best nutrition, all the best exercise. You can have fantastic quality sleep. However, if you have subluxation in your spine and the bear stays in the room, and it's not going to be as effective. You're not going to have as much nutrient absorption because the nervous system is directing blood flow away from those digestive organs into that fight or flight mode. Your exercise is not going to be as effective. That's why a lot of sports and athletes use chiropractic. And your sleep isn't going to be as restful, even though you may be, quote, unquote, sleeping. Your eyes may be closed. It's not going to be as restful. Your body's not getting as much from it if you're in that constant fight or flight mode from having subluxation or, or interference in your spine and nerve system. Okay, so even though all those things are fantastic, nutrition, exercise, sleep, they're life-saving, they're life-transforming, fantastic, do them. If you have subluxation in your spine, your body's not able, able to continue to do as much as it should. Okay, and so people ask, well, how do I know if I have subluxation? In my office, we test. We look at posture. Posture is the window to the spine. We look at range of motion. How is it moving? I put my hands on. We, we feel. Are things stressed out? Or is there tension in certain parts of the body? We use a special technology called thermography. It actually can show there's a readout of stress along the spine. Um, my office is very different from every other office in Idaho because I use special imaging. Okay, in my last office, we used x-rays, which are great. Many chiropractors do use x-rays, and it's important. It's helpful. Um, but I've gone one step beyond that, and I use something called CBCT. These are 3D images, so I can actually rotate and see exactly where things are within your spine. I can see a 3D image. It's in much more detail than any x-ray I've ever seen before. It's fantastic. And as, as far as I'm aware, I'm the only chiropractor in all of Idaho who does this. And so um, the benefit to my patients of me using that 3D image is I can be very specific at the misalignments that I see and being able to correct those that you can never see on an x-ray. In addition, we can use very gentle techniques. So the correction is very gentle. Many people don't even realize that their neck has been adjusted because I can uh, do it so gently. And then we use specific muscle tests to tell me, is the adjustment effective? Are we removing subluxation? Is the spine more balanced? Uh, we use uh, muscle tests to tell us that. Okay, so this is the way that I use to determine if there's subluxation. I wish I could just look at people and say, hey, you have subluxation, hey, you don't. As I mentioned before, many people don't have overt symptoms, even though they may be visiting their medical doctor and receiving drugs for symptoms of stress. They don't know that there could be a problem with their spine and nerve system. So uh, that's one of the points is we want to get the information out there that everybody deserves to be checked. Okay, because here's what happens. If we do have these symptoms developing of stress in our life, and we're continuing to do what most people do, which is have our, our uh, symptoms and diseases managed uh, by the medical system, uh, then here's unfortunately the results, okay? So these are all Journal of the American Medical Association. And so this is the medical system itself telling itself, hey, you know what, we might be on the wrong track. So this one on the left is US Health really the best in the world. 44 to 98,000 Americans every year die due to medical error. Um, and then more recently, 2009, here in the middle, exploring the harmful effects of healthcare. The benefits that the U.S. healthcare currently delivers may, out, may not outweigh the harm that it imparts. And then over here on the right side, the incidence of serious and fatal adverse drug reactions in U.S. hospitals was found to be extremely high. And so my point as a chiropractor is to get this information out there that we can do things that can reduce our stress. That if we have a symptom, it's not because our body is stupid. It's because the environment is not right. There's something wrong and we need to get it looked at that there are non-pharmaceutical, non-surgical ways that we can have to have a healthy body to express health from the inside out. And those are some of the things I talked about that are in the notes if you download those notes. Um, and then, of course, making sure that your spine and nerve system is optimal. Okay, and So that's why one thing that I want to do today is offer for anyone in the area. Okay, And when I say area, I've had people drive six hours to see me before. And so when I say area, uh, yeah, I'm talking about our area. If you're in the area, Come get your spine and nerve system checked. If you're not in the area, go to someone local. Um, that's actually going to check your spine and nerve system. Unfortunately, many people think that chiropractic is about back pain or neck pain. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, you didn't hear me talk about that at all. Uh, my recommendation is that you get checked by someone who's not going to necessarily just look for pain, but actually going to examine your spine and nerve system for optimal function and reducing stress. Okay, what I do in my office is valued at $450 for all the testing procedures that I do. 
And what I'm willing to do is because of the stress talk today, do that for just 150. Okay. And the way that you get that, if you're coming to my office, is you go to our website, afcidaho.com, afcidaho.com. And when you click on scheduling an appointment, type in the notes, stress talk, and then we'll get you that, um, that discount. All right, so here's an example of someone who had come in to see me. Um, she was wonderful, she still is wonderful, um, but she was trying to do everything right. Her nutrition was great, her exercise was fantastic, and um, she would try to reduce stress. She was in the education system, so of course there's gonna be some stress there. Uh, one of the things that she writes, she started seeing me because she couldn't find relief for her headaches and shoulder pain. Um, she says that when she found me, I discovered the source of her problems, uh, and they were coming from her neck being out of alignment. And so she got into a regular routine of adjustments. It relieved all of her shoulder pain. Now she rarely suffers from headaches. And over the past several years, um, she's had injuries because, like I said, she has a good, solid workout routine. Unfortunately, if you're at the edge of competition, um, unfortunately, injuries can happen. So sometimes she would come in with injuries because of her strength training, and I would always get her in. I would see her. Uh, we'd get her back on the road to health. Um, at the bottom here, she writes, Dr. Perry is knowledgeable on many health topics in addition to chiropractic and has been an integral part in her health journey. Uh, she, I'm blushing here, she says he's a very personal and really cares about the well-being of his patients. And I do. I believe that everyone should have a loving chiropractor, even if it's not me. Okay. And so uh, this concludes today's talk on stress. I want to close out with this, chiropractic and stress, the research. Uh, here in the, the top study, they showed that after a chiropractic adjustment, what we call it, here in the article they called it a spinal manipulation, what they showed is that there was a shift in the nervous system from stress to less stress after an adjustment because the biochemical markers changed. Um, this middle one, effects of chiropractic care on heart rate variability, once again, they showed a shift from stress state to less stress, straight, less stressed state after a chiropractic adjustment. And then this bottom one, for all of our medical heads in the room, um, really turned medicine upside down. It's, it, it was an upper cervical chiropractor. By the way, I use upper cervical care also in my approach. Um, so this was a NUCA upper cervical chiropractor. He did adjustments in this study on people that had no neck pain, no back pain. Um, and the important thing there is that many people say, oh, the reduction in stress is due to a reduction in pain. Well, all of the people in this study had no pain at all, no neck pain, no back pain when they came in. They didn't even know that they were adjusted because the way he does it, he just touches on a certain area of the neck without any push, any pull, any, anything at all. And so there was no way for anyone to know what he did. So it was double blind, placebo controlled study, medical standard. And what they showed was a drop in blood pressure equivalent to taking two blood pressure medications. So 17 points over 10 reduction from a chiropractic adjustment. So stress is real. It does affect the body and reducing stresses absolutely helps us to have a better life. Um, and so thank you very much for attending. Be with me next month. We're talking about chronic pain and how to use natural methods in overcoming that. I appreciate your time um, in being with me and I wish you all the best. We'll see you soon.